This is Listing Impossible. We're going to get you the highest price because the property next to ours did just sell. Yes, I am confident I can sell it. Hi, guys. Hope everyone's Hi. well. Good morning. Good uh, morning. Wanted to uh, start today's meeting with a new potential listing. It originated actually from Todd. I've known the seller for almost 10 years. She went through a divorce. She's not really being served by this house anymore, so she just wants to get rid of it. She asked us if we could help. I said, absolutely, we'd love to. Todd has been on my team for a couple of years now, and he hasn't done many sales, but he is very well connected. And at the end of the day, I do believe in him. Is there a reason why you asked me if it would be okay if you were her advisor rather than her real estate agent? This is something that she and her ex-husband built and picked out stone and got fabrics and remodels. And so you get a lot of emotions in it. All I am hearing here is this woman is gonna be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> it's a warning sign that Todd doesn't want to represent the seller. It makes me wonder about the seller, about the situation, and what's really going on. Thank you for bringing this to the team. Yeah. I want you guys to look on your phones. It's an absolutely gorgeous house. And it's been on and off the market for 250 days. Uh, she started with a list price of 30 million, and it is still listed at 30 million. No. I have yet to meet her, so I would love to bring a co-list and uh, go see what we can do. Uh, Todd, question for you. You know the seller. I, I know who I think I want to go with. Who do you think would be right, being that you are very close friends with the owner? I honestly think that Morgan would be the best. I like the sports angle in this, sure. uh, and I think you'll kill it. Yeah. I wanted to co-list this listing with Morgan because a lot of athletes live in Orange County and in this area, and I thought, who better than Morgan? An ex-NFL player, but also Morgan is super chill. He has a very different energy than I do. So I look forward to seeing you both at that house. Aaron's new client lives on the Balboa Peninsula in Newport Beach, about two hours south of LA. The neighborhood is wealthy, safe, and right on the water, offering buyers the quintessential Southern California lifestyle. At the same time, the house has been languishing on the market for 251 days, a huge red flag. It's what agents call a stale listing. You know what they say, always buy the cheapest house on the most expensive street. Not the most expensive castle on the beach. Right. Kimberly's house was like this Italian castle, smack in the middle of all these cute beachy houses. This is just That's kind just of a is. fish out of water right now. 30 million is high for this neighborhood. Should we go? Well, let's do it. I'm really hoping that whatever we find out in Newport, Todd having a relationship with a seller will help. Hi. Hey, how are Good you? Nice Good to meet you. Pleasure. Morgan, Hi, how are Morgan. you? Pleasure. Very nice yeah, to meet likewise. you. Likewise. So you built this house from ground up? No, my ex-spouse and I, we completely changed the house. It was kind of like pulling a thread where we <laughs> made one change and then it evolved into yeah. another. I'm dying to go see the rest. Yes, absolutely. In my opinion, this is the most beautiful home on the peninsula. There's not another home like it. It is such a beautiful place. Between guest house garage and the main house, and you have the private courtyard. The main house is about 7,800 square feet. Then you have with the pool in the backyard two dock spaces. It's just the perfect family house. The flow of the house is ideal for entertaining. When I was building this home, it was going to be our forever family home. This is the dining room first, perfect. but with the divorce, it just didn't make any sense to hold on to an estate like this when my children prefer Santa Barbara. I picked a round dining room table because it's meant for family holidays. And it all wrapped Tuscan in fabric, the walls look. here. I, I love this. Don't love the fabric, but love this. Well, you have wow, to understand, right. it's authentic Tuscan farmhouse. Got it. One thing that I could tell initially, and I know this is ungodly expensive wallpaper, but from a sellability standpoint, I could tell you that if we lighten this, mm -hmm. a buyer's energy would be much more in today's marketplace. 
keep going. Let's get a full vibe. Let's get of a the vibe. Yeah, I'd love to see the next room. This is a beautiful master bath. Stunning. Is this the Zaza tile? Yep, that's Ooh. all penny cut. We spent $3 million on just furnishings and chandeliers. The drapes throughout the home were made of Italian silk that we had found remnants of while we were over in Italy. And you can go ahead and see the stone detail as well. Wow, very pretty. Just the stone was a couple million dollars. We redid all the iron work, all the landscaping. We imported all the olive trees from Central California. Up here yeah. was a flat roof. I added the sunroof, and then we suspended two lanterns from it. What did this cost? Eight million dollars. On the restoration? On the restoration. Oh my god. Yeah. Is that why you got divorced? <laughs> <laughs> this room, we had a pool table in here. Yeah, this was the billiards room, right? I went ahead and removed the pool table just to give someone a different perspective of office. When we set this up as an office, you kind of did it halfway. Like, you didn't carry it through. So you have a table, you have these two chairs, but it feels empty, it feels like an afterthought. There's a desk, but it's not an office. So the tweak here is a very soft, easy one. I'd like to see some chairs, some maybe lighter furniture. I am not going to start tearing these rooms apart. If I go through and do all of that, I can open the door and put for sale by owner, okay? I want you guys to walk someone in, and I want you to be telling them everything that you're telling me. Kimberly is a badass woman who knows what she wants. But I know my business, and I know how to sell houses. There are real challenges with it. This house looks like a mausoleum. The decor is heavy. This is a beach house that feels like it's nowhere near the beach. You combine all these things together, and you get a very hard sell. Let's look at the theater. We made it like an old-fashioned theater. Yes, it is. With the reclining it chairs. It definitely feels old-fashioned. Old -fashioned, yeah. Again, I wouldn't mind a little bit more youthful energy. Younger, brighter. Whoever buys the house can do whatever they want with it. We're not, not gonna be able to sell your house unless we get somebody to fall in love with it. So I'm not redoing the house. I'm real, I'm really, really not. Two years from now, we may be here again. And that's not what we want. We want what's right for you. Hey, Aaron, I will tell you right now, we need to stop this talk. Kimberly's a stubborn, stubborn, lovely lady, but stubborn. Don't go from room to room picking and pecking it apart, okay? I, it it drives quality. me nuts. And that's tricky because I'm here to be successful for her and she shuts me down. We will be quiet on the next tours. No, you don't have to be quiet. <laughs> no, we'll, we won't say a word. Just, we'll, we'll take notes. Do you have your notepads? I don't like this room. While Aaron and Morgan struggle in Newport Beach, Nisha is bringing Lewis to one of her properties in the Hollywood Hills. Why'd you bring sunglasses today? I don't want to get rain oh, on my wow. eyes. You don't want to get rain on your eyes? Yes. The house is what luxury agents in LA call a bread and butter listing. Properties priced at $5 million or less that sell relatively fast and generate reliable cash flow. It's part of the market Lewis has so far neglected. Hey guys. Hi. Good to Hi. see you. How are you? Fantastic. This is Lewis. Hi. Hey man. Jeff. Lewis has it in his head that he should go after these $20 million listings. You know, you're waiting for one in 10 billionaires to come and buy this house. So I'm bringing Lewis to this bread and butter listing because it's in more of the entry level market that really make up a huge part of our business. Come on, show me around. Sounds good. Yeah, absolutely. So Jeff Blue is a really interesting client. He's worked with a ton of other musicians and celebrities. And now he's actually flipping houses with his personal taste and style. I love that gold of Les Paul on the wall. Yep, actually, so this is a part of the art that I do. I've been in the music business for about 25 years and wow. then had this whim to create art based on music. I've been focused full time on real estate for about three and a half years now. It definitely was a slow start. I'm still paycheck to paycheck. 
Most of my focus has been high price listings. I actually just got a listing. The Orem property, $56 million house. But Aaron recommended to me going after the bread and butter listings. $56 million houses are hard to sell. Sometimes it can take a couple of years. Focus on the middle and even the lesser price points because that's how you're gonna win. This is just a much more consistent business model and you need that to pay the bills.